Kit Guru is with Acer at CES 2024 and behind me a series of laptops. Start at the left and work along the line. They're not quite in order. A whole sequence of Predator Helios laptops and the specs handlier on the screen so we can see here the Helios 16, Intel 14th Gen Core i9, processors that Intel will be announcing tomorrow. Uh, up to NVIDIA RTX 4080 and a 16 inch panel, 16 10 ratio mini LED 250 hertz. Also interesting, and it might sound like a minor feature, these keycaps here, the WASDs, can be swapped out, just the keycaps themselves, not the switches. However, we're told the, the alternate keycaps have springs under the keycap uh, surface and that gives them a different feel. So you're not touching the switches, but apparently it gives it a mechanical feel. Never seen that before. The point here with the various Helioses, or Heli I, I suppose is the plural, is that we have a variety of NVIDIA and Intel specs. The screens also change somewhat. It's quite notable that with the Helios 18, obviously, it's a hefty uh, laptop on the diagonal, and it means there's plenty of space for cooling. But if we look at the side of the Helios 16, that's quite a chunky boy, and that's because the Intel Core i9-HX processors sound by spec to be much like the desktop 14th gen Raptor Lake refreshes, and those processors require a lot of power. Helios 18, up to Core i9, up to RTX 4090, and mini-LED 250Hz display in an 18-inch form factor, a huge laptop for the enthusiast gamer. And then we have the Predator Helios Neo 16, so again, up to Core i9 14th Gen, this up to RTX 4070, a mid-weight laptop we can agree, 16-inch form factor, 16-10 ratio, 240Hz, and quite a high rating for the panel, and I have to say by eye, it looks absolutely lovely. We're going to see an awful lot of 16-inch laptops from Intel, they really are putting a huge emphasis on cooling. And then we move on to the Predator Helios Neo 18. The difference between the regular Helios 18 and the Helios Neo 18 is the panel. So 18 inches, 1610, WQXGA, 240 Hz, DCI, P3. So it's the quality of the panel. I must confess to my eyes, the Helios 18 looks nice. However, the Helios Neo 18 looks absolutely blooming amazing. And it's a similar story with the Predator Triton Neo 16. The 16 being obviously the screen size on the diagonal and the Neo part referring to the quality of the screen. The fact it's a 16 is no surprise when you consider it runs a Core Ultra or Meteor Lake processor. Now you might wonder about these bizarre noises. It's the pigs making a noise. The snag here is you won't be able to see what I'm seeing, which is that this screen has a 3D trick going on. It's essentially two images arranged at an angle. So the human eye can see, in fact, I'm wrong there, they're at this angle. So all these cameras here are detecting my presence and they're adjusting the image and putting me at the correct focal point. It looks absolutely remarkable and yet the trouble is it sounds, as I know, like BS because you can't see it. I really like that. We saw a prototype of this a year ago. This is near ready for production. You may have suspected a moment ago I was talking old hokum about 3D displays. Well, now I'm talking triple old hokum. We have three panels each with the same 3D technology that I can see that you can't. And we've got a whole bunch of cameras in the center and on the sides. And this means that the three panels are working together such that I can literally see objects flying past my head. Not only coming towards me, but flying past my ears. It's absolutely bizarre to see. And oh look, another display. And yes, once again, 3D technology. The significant thing here is that this is aimed at the professional market. In essence, any professional users in the market for AR or VR headsets, so car designers, architects, people doing urban planning, the idea is that instead of having to put on a headset, they could instead simply sit in front of a monitor, such as this. And I can see how this could be an absolute winner for Acer. Deeply impressive. I'm not sure I've actually named the technology so far. It is Spatial Labs technology. And this is a movie handily showing us the back end of a deer. 
So they've taken a regular movie and they've made it 3D. It's absolutely remarkable. Uh, to my eyes, there's a significant depth of field moving back through the trees and into the distance. This wheat, if that's what it is, is definitely to the front of the frame. Sadly, on video, you ain't going to get any of the benefit. But this looks like an absolutely remarkable thing to bring to laptops. And that explains the name, the Aspire 3D 15 Spatial Labs Edition, because it has Spatial Labs technology. A pair of Acer laptops, the Aspire Vero 16, these are all about recycled materials. Uh, there's some numbers we have to work with at least 60% PCR casing, in other words, recycled plastic. That means the plastic parts use more recycled material than they did previously. It was about 30% before, it's about 60% now. The plastic is a significant part of the whole of the laptop, so while it's not 60% of the entire laptop, it is a significant step in the correct direction. In addition, 100% recycled packaging, i.e. the box, and also we're told the PCB inside the laptop has been made smaller from the previous generation so that helps to save on both materials and cost. And then we have laptops aimed more at the regular consumer. So the SwiftGo 14 packs up to an Intel Ultra 9. That is a very thin and light laptop, uses integrated graphics. And looking at the touchpad we can see it has functions built in to control media playback. Interestingly, we were told it's not lit up and working because it requires a driver update. So this clearly happens to even the best of us. Next to the SwiftGo 14, we have the SwiftGo 16. Again, Intel Core Ultra 9. So we have the Intel technologies AI ready with Intel AI boost. The panel is an OLED display and it's crystal clear that this is much brighter than its neighbors and it has Wi-Fi 7. And then here we have the SwiftX 14. This has adding graphics rather than integrated graphics. So the processor is Intel Core Ultra 7, the graphics up to RTX 4070. Once again, the panel, OLED, and it's lovely and bright and clear. And we're finishing up with two routers. These are Wi-Fi 7 routers powered by Qualcomm. They've got quite rorty names. The basic router for £250 is the Predator Connect T7 Wi-Fi 7. The other is the Predator Connect X7 5G CPE. That costs £320. We consider it long overdue to see Wi-Fi 7 in the consumer market, and we just love fast Wi-Fi. I have to say it's quite disappointing that the Spatial Labs laptops and screens which look absolutely brilliant to the eye will look like nothing to you. Indeed it will sound like I'm talking complete nonsense. That 3D technology is just amazing. However, in addition to the Spatial Labs technology, we also have a series of laptops here packing in the latest hardware from both NVIDIA and Intel and in addition they got some really good high quality OLED screens. Great stuff, Acer, and a good start to CES 2024.